In 2022, the serene beauty of Egypt's Red Sea resorts was tainted by a chilling string of fatal shark attacks, resulting in the deaths of two women. One victim was 68-year-old Austrian Elizabeth Sauer, whose horrific encounter with a mako shark was caught in graphic video footage. This disturbing incident and its aftermath were an ominous prelude to a much more recent tragedy which occurred just a mere 48 hours ago. Footage from various sources revealed the horror behind the tragic death a 23-year-old man who had been swimming close ashore at the Dream Beach Resort in Hurghada, Egypt, before being brutally attacked by a large tiger shark in front of multiple eyewitnesses. An event that has gone on to take the world by storm. But recently, many questions have arisen as to whether this rise in shark aggression in these regions of the Red Sea is merely a coincidental phenomenon, or whether these instances are part of a concerning pattern that seems to be taking shape. On a fateful day in July 2022, Elizabeth Sauer, a longtime resident of Egypt, was swimming near the popular tourist area of Sal Hashish when suddenly a mako shark attacked her, brutally tearing off one of her arms and a leg. As one horrified witness recounted, she's got no arm up to her elbow. The shark grabbed her and twisted her around. Sauer's desperate struggle to escape was captured in heart-wrenching video footage. She then swam towards the shore, with bystanders throwing her a flotation device amid a rapidly spreading cloud of blood. The witness continued, Where are the rescuers? F she's covered in blood. An echo of the sheer panic and terror of the moment. The lack of lifeguards during this terrifying event prompted bitter complaints from horrified onlookers, and despite the best efforts of those who tried to resuscitate her, Sauer's injuries would prove too severe, and after being rushed to a local hospital, she would tragically pass away. In a tragic twist of fate, a Romanian woman in her 40s would then meet a similar end on the same day, just hours later. Her mutilated body being found less than a half mile from where Sauer was attacked, and her identity would remain anonymous. In response to these horrifying incidents, Red Sea Governor Amr Hanafi ordered a three-day closure of all beaches in the area. What's concerning is that the sequence of these fatal attacks is not an isolated occurrence in the region. In fact, over recent years, the frequency of shark attacks in the area has seen a worrying increase. In 2020, a 12-year-old Ukrainian boy tragically lost an arm and a leg in a shark attack. And in 2018 and 2015, a Czech and German tourist lost their lives in similar incidents. And in what is perhaps the most curious illustration of this disturbing trend, the Egypt shark attacks of 2010 stand out. The once vibrant Red Sea resort of Sharm El Sheikh was gripped in fear after an unprecedented series of five shark attacks occurred over five days. The tranquil waters, known for their abundance of exotic fish and stunning coral formations, were left eerily undisturbed, their lure overshadowed by the unfolding events. The air was heavy with palpable dread, with tourists warily patrolling the water's edge or seeking solace in beachside bars. Nina Dzinski, who was vacationing then, recalls the chaos that ensued as shouts of shark, shark, in Russian punctured the serene ambience. She was emerging from the water when the first attack happened. Her husband Yaroslav, who was still in the water, described a frantic scramble for safety. Mohammad Rashad, a barman at a nearby beach restaurant, had described bearing witness to the horrifying sight of a man running from the sea, his leg gushing blood. These attacks, so close to shore, sparked widespread fear and a rapid beach evacuation. In fact, many beachgoers, traumatized by the bloody scenes, would go on to pledge never to return to Sharm El Sheikh. It wasn't long before authorities sprang into action, closing Sharm El Sheikh's beaches and setting out the track and capture the shark, which was later identified to be an oceanic white tip. However, the measures taken by the authorities, including the capturing and killing of two sharks, did little to lessen the fear that had settled among the tourists. Now, despite the inherent risks of venturing into the water, unfortunately, only some of these people were deterred. Beachgoer Denise Rhodes had refused to let the incident ruin their vacation and was a firm believer in accepting her fate as it was written, no matter what was in store. However, many more were cautious, their confidence rattled by the gruesome incident. This divergence in perspectives raises an important question. How much risk is acceptable when interacting with wild nature and how can it be mitigated? And of course, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, and as many of you may know, the cruel twist of fate struck again in 2023, just days ago, when 23-year-old Vladimir Popov fell victim to a fatal tiger shark attack. The echoes of these past tragedies, including the most recent one, reverberate ominously 
underscoring an urgent need for enhancing safety measures and in-depth investigation into patterns of shark behavior in the Red Sea. As we trace the chilling string of fatal shark attacks in Egypt's Red Sea from 2022 and the most recent one in 2023, these incidents' striking similarities and shared locations prompt us to question whether these tragic encounters are somehow intertwined. It's conceivable that changes in the marine ecosystem or increased human activity in shark habitats could be sparking this increased aggression in these oceanic predators. The attacks could be a result of shifts in food availability, changes in water temperature, or even pollution levels that might impact shark behavior. And another possibility, albeit less likely, is the involvement of the same shark or group of sharks in multiple incidents. In other words, man-eaters. Christian Parton of the YouTube channel Shark Bites, who's also a shark scientist, offers a unique perspective on the situation, diving deeper into why the tiger shark in question might have been particularly aggressive. He cleverly points to factors such as changes in water temperature and others that might have led to the shark being hungrier than usual. Tiger sharks in the Red Sea reportedly begin to move into shallower waters because of their mating season, which supposedly runs between the months of April and July. But what's also happening during those months is turtle nesting season. There's no question about it, the sharks will be following the turtles. And as those turtles move towards the beaches to lay their eggs, the tiger sharks will follow them in from the deeper water into the shallow waters. The second thing that we need to point out here, which is a really interesting one, is the ocean topography of the area. Generally, just a few meters off the shore, you can have these amazing tropical reefs that stay in the shallower waters, but then very quickly, they steeply drop off into deeper water. So in these locations, you can find yourself swimming in shallow waters or snorkeling on the reef, and then really quickly, it's gonna drop off significantly to deep water. And sometimes these drop-offs occur maybe only 20 or 30 meters off the shore. And it's this topography that means that shark species that might normally be patrolling the deeper waters find themselves in shallower waters relatively easily. And this is the case for all of the species of shark that have been reported to have bitten people within that area. The third thing that I'm gonna throw in now is water temperature. Right now in Haggadah, you're getting an average sea surface temperature of around 27 degrees Celsius. Based on scientific studies, ambient water Water temperature can directly have an impact on shark metabolism, i.e. water temperature goes up, shark metabolism goes up. And this factor then increases the need for a shark to consume more food. Considering these various factors, it's impossible to overlook the potential role of beach resort management in mitigating and preventing such tragic attacks in the future. And while it would be premature to make definitive claims, there's clearly a significant need to sift through the effectiveness of warning systems, the adequacy of emergency response protocols, and the level of education provided to beachgoers regarding potential shark hazards. By doing this, they would create safer environments for locals and tourists in Egypt's Red Sea resorts by approaching these aspects with a critical eye and a commitment to improvement. The current ongoing investigation aims to address any shortcomings to ensure the well-being and security of all who enjoy the beauty of these coastal destinations. It's important that I note, however, that these are merely conjectures that warrant robust scientific investigations to validate. First, understanding the potential connections in these patterns is vital in solving this unnerving enigma and is also crucial for preventing shark attacks from occurring in the future. If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode about a man who'd fallen victim to a gruesome great white shark attack is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video.